scratching on the surface You'll never find a pearl if you wait out on the shore That's the way it is when you're looking for the answers Wisdom lies deep, wisdom lies in the search Look a little deeper, go a little further Search a little harder, don't you know you've got to grow you know you've got to grow You know you've got to grow You've got to grow Greetings and welcome to Probe. Last week we looked at how to keep the marriage alive and healthy. This week we are going to look at what a godly family portrait looks like. When you sit for a family portrait, there are always flaws in it. Dad's tie is crooked. Mom's eyes are closed. Baby is crying. Let us look at the family from God's perspective and discover God's purpose for the family. Come on and join me as Dr. Duke Jairaj speaks to Dr. Nirmala Abraham about a godly family portrait. Brother Duke, welcome to Probe once again. Thank you. We are so happy and honored to have you with us for this episode, which is called a Godly Family Portrait. You know, when we sit for a family portrait or a photograph, we find that the finished product is hardly ever perfect. The dad's tie is not straight, the mother's uh, smile is not good, the baby starts crying, something or the other. Tell us, what exactly does the portrait of a Godly Family look like? The Bible portrays for us several portraits of the family. We would do well to take time to look at that. One portrait is that the family is like a city on a hill. Yes. And then another portrait of an army. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 30, one can chase thousand and two can chase not two thousand but ten thousand. That reminds me that if the husband and wife work together, the kids work together, siblings work together, the father, mother and the children work together. There's an exponential multiplication of the effectiveness for the gospel mm. or kingdom building that results when the family starts to work together like an army. So it's uh, unity in the family. Yes, the unity in the family is so precious. The effectiveness is so gets multiplied, so gets exponentially multiplied. So instead of energy, there is energy. You know, the story of the prodigal son yes. shows us that the family is a place where you can come back and you can feel that you belong there and you are accepted with open arms no matter what you have done. Don't you think this is exactly what the father in that story has demonstrated? Yes. While I mentioned that the family can be like an army, I was not referring to a, a regimental style of parenting yes, which we that's get true. to see in the <laughs> movie Sound of Music. <laughs> not at all. Yes. Uh, there is love that undergirds everything. Mm. And in the story that we read in scripture in Luke chapter 15, mm. the father is waiting at the door or mm. waiting at the compound or wherever he is, mm. waiting for the son to come back. And the key thing in that passage is in verse 17 in that chapter where we read about the prodigal son, mm. the young man came to his senses. Yes. So there's a responsibility for the young people mm. there to actually feel sorry for what they have done. Yes. And there's a responsibility in the elders in the family mm. uh, to accept them just the, the way they are. Mm. And God forbid that any member of the family should not be like the elder brother mm. who had a self-righteous attitude. Exactly. That is why uh, as an evangelist I tell people not just to repent from their sins mm. but also repent from their good deeds which they think will mm. get them to heaven yes. or make them right before God. We should do good deeds not because we get saved by doing good deeds mm. but because we are saved in response we do good deeds. Mm. The elder brother perhaps thought that he has been all along a good son mm. so he deserved to be in the family. None of us deserve to be in the family of God. He saves us by grace. Mm. So we should watch out for that elder brother mentality mm. of self-righteousness. And he was gritting his teeth and doing the good deeds. Yes. Because when he 
realize that the fatted cow was killed for the prodigal son's return and the celebration, yes. he was so angry. Now, doesn't that show his attitude? That shows his self-righteous attitude. Mm. And self-righteousness will not work anywhere mm. and more importantly in family. A husband cannot have a self-righteous attitude. Yes. The wife cannot have that. The children cannot have that. Mm. Even when parents correct the children, mm. the dad or the mom does it not with a self-righteous, mm. I am holier than you yes, attitude, yes. but with a compassionate mm. father heart. Yes. With a heart which says, mm. yes, it's all right. Mm. You've done what you have done. But I am here to forgive you. Mm. I am here to help you right. become the person God wants you to become. Mm. And I will even give my life for you to become that. Mm. And I am going to forget what you have done mm. and we are going to move on. And we are going to be as though nothing has happened yes, between us. Yes, that's the word. Mm. The Bible word is justification. Mm. And that means we are also ready to forgive our children, right. forgive our spouses the way God forgave us. Mm. Colossians 3.13 says, forgive as quickly and completely as your master forgave you. Mm. So God's forgiveness for us presents for us a model for mm. which we need to forgive yes. our family members. Yes. And there will be many things to, for which we mm. need to forgive them. After all, we are all fallen human beings mm. and are working yes. towards perfection. And uh, the father ran down the road with open arms to receive yes. this prodigal son. Yes, yes. yes. Which means, uh, you know, we don't grudgingly forgive or we mm. don't forgive just because the Bible says we mm. must forgive. Yes, that's a motivation. But it comes from our heart. Mm. And that's why the father ran. Yes. So we also run to offer forgiveness. Yes. There are families, it's very sad, uh, where the immediate members of the family, husbands don't talk to wives. Mm. You know, rebellious sons right. don't talk to their fathers. Yes. You know, Chetan Bhagat recently, a famous author, wrote uh, his own stories that he... It was when during his growing up years, he never talked with his dad. Yes. And you know, it's a reality, not mm. just in, in Chetan Bhagat's life, even in the lives of several believer families. Right. Where there are people don't talk with each other. Uh, when a son calls, when if the dad picks up, the son hangs up the phone. Mm. You know, it's, it's a reality. True. But we need to come out of that. We mm. need to repent and we need to have the forgiveness of Christ overflowing in our families. Yes. That's a portrait of a godly family. Yes. A yes. family that is forgiving. Right. Now, on the other hand, the Bible talks about in Hebrews uh, 12, 6, it says yes. that whom God loves, he mm -hmm. chastens, he disciplines. Yes. That's tough love, isn't it? It's hard to discipline or chasten somebody that you love, but y yet you have to do it. Do you do that in your family with your children? Absolutely. I do that because I understand the nature of God as it's revealed in the Bible. Mm. God is holy. And God is love. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, He is a holy, holy God. He is a thrice holy God. Mm. And out of His holiness comes discipline. Mm. So if I love my son, and if I'm truly, you know, if I truly love my son, I won't be watching when he is you know, going wrong. That is why motivated by that love mm. and modeled by me, you know, mm. I have no right to correct my children mm. in areas which where I have not been a model yes. to them. David, you can't say, do as I say, don't do as I do. Correct, correct. David you know, uh, committed sexual immorality and he had to uh, watch mm. and uh, in silence when his son Amnon raped mm. his uh, half Right. Sister Tamar. Yes. One reason was he had he had lost the moral authority to correct mm. his children. Mm. So God forbid something like that should happen in our homes. Yes. So uh, modeled by us, that is the holiness that mm. God gives us in the, uh, living the life of holiness, mm. and motivated by love, we must get into the ministry. I won't say it's a ministry to actually to discipline children. Mm. There are families who just refuse to discipline children. You know, they either the children are watching TV all the time or mm. uh, on the iPad all the time. I think they don't want to get unpopular with their children. Correct. They don't want to take the risk of displeasing their children. That is very sad. But if we truly love our children, mm. we will discipline the children. That's the Absolutely. message of the book of Proverbs. It's yes. there uh, repeatedly. It also talks about taking the rod of correction. Yes. So, I thank God I am who I am because of the, the rod of correction that was put on me mm. by my parents right. who are missionaries. And I'm grateful for that. You know, I went to an Assembly of God church where the pastor said he talked about the whackings that he got from his mom, <laughs> which made him live a holy life even yes. though he was an atheist. Yes. Think of it, you know, how effective sometimes the discipline of parents can be in undergirding their moral fiber. Mm. So it's very, very important. The book of Proverbs in the Bible is very clear. If we withhold discipline, we withhold the rod, 
we hate our children mm. and which parent wants to hate our children right. none of us want to mm. so that's why we must bring in discipline in our family yes and we must do it with love mm. and we must do it firmly yes right. and in a, one of the previous episodes you had mentioned about how god told us repeatedly that yes. he loves us but yes. he also showed it in action by giving up his only son for us yes now how do we translate that into our lives today now jesus is a model for our family life in every way mm. he was not married but he's a model in every way yes as a son he was a model yeah. because he lived obediently with his parents mm -hmm. and then as a son he took care of his mother that is why he spoke those words on the cross yes and uh, he's a model in the way he even dealt with his disciples mm. now when jesus was basically a traveling preacher who lived with the family the family was his 12 disciples mm. when he saw some things wrong with them when we read the gospel narratives mm. jesus corrected them mm. when he saw a lack of faith he talked about their lack of faith yes. and uh, he when he saw they were fighting over who is going to be the greatest he addressed that issue in fact he gave a demonstration by calling a little child mm. and uh, telling them that they had to be like him if they had to enter the kingdom yes so in his family of which was actually the disciples basically he was traveling preacher living with his disciples when he saw something which was not exactly going in line with what god would have them do mm. he took efforts to change that mm. he took efforts to if i can use the word discipline them mm. the same way as husbands as spouses we must discipline our family mm. that way you know we are modeling christ to our family mm. so discipline on one side and at the same time sacrificial love because Sac jesus yes. gave up his life yes. for his People. Yes, absolutely. See, Jesus, the epistles we read that husbands must love their wives as mm -hmm. Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Yes. So which is the ultimate love. Mm. So to run a marriage to make a marriage successful mm. that the same sacrificial love mm. should be exhibited in the family. Mm. The husband for his wife and the wife for the husband. Mm. So th that sacrificial life love means practically it starts with small things. Mm. Like if I'm watching TV with my wife Uh, I sacrifice mm. my favorite preferred channel mm. and give her the choice of her channel. Yes. So I I learned to enjoy the channel that she's watching mm -hmm. and I enjoy the way just as the way I enjoy my cricket mm. or mm. my my sports channel. Mm. So sacrifice begins with that. That's being Christ like of the family. Mm. It's not doing some big stuff. Mm -hmm. It's doing the small things mm. and then building up to the big stuff my daughter in law when she got married she was not uh, very much interested in tennis okay. but my son is a tennis player so yes. she took the trouble of learning all about tennis uh -huh. she said i know i'm going to marry this man so now for the rest of my life if i want to spend time with him i have to watch wimbledon and all the us open australian open hours and hours so i better understand this game and learn to enjoy this and enjoy being with him as we watch together so the other day when australian open was going on she told me you know mama you won't believe this I was watching the Australian Open and Ajay was looking at what furniture to buy for the house I said when did this happen now uh -huh. <laughs> you know they have become so much like each other Yes yes placing our life partners likes above mm. our likes <laughs> that's being a Christ like in a marriage yes, yes. absolutely In today's world we see that uh, when young couples get married you know first it is that romance stage they are running around trees or whatever film mm -hmm. style and it's all beautiful and full of uh, it's a rosy picture and then starts the monotonous humdrum of life you know the routine starts and then the pressures of life hits them mm -hmm. and satan is working overtime mm -hmm. to break up families mm -hmm. so it is very easy for them to just be broken because of the pressures how can we make sure that in spite of all these pressures and in spite of the monotony of daily life the family can be kept intact yes i think couples must receive solid counsel mm. from god's word maybe parents yes. should 
instill parents, that in them or they can meet a trained counselor mm. uh, available with the local church or yes. any interdenominational mm. ministry mm. we thank god for each one of those ministries you yourself are a counselor so you know they need to meet with godly people like that a counselors parents they are believers strong believers even parents would be able to give this kind of counsel wherein young people are talked up told about different kinds of love mm. okay running around trees mm. uh, running on the beach mm. uh, with your uh, girlfriend that is one thing okay mm. but there is another kind of love which mm. is a uh, love which uh, which motivates you to change nappies maybe mm. 10 nappies a night if that a grumpy mm. face sometimes if the servant doesn't turn up you know mm. to sweep the floor right this is also love mm. and it's as romantic as running around trees or running in the beach yes so <laughs> when they understand love can be expressed in different ways yes. and there's not just one way to express love mm. then they don't think of the monotone as a monotone mm. they think of that monotone okay getting up in the morning getting ready mm -hmm. uh, preparing uh, breakfast and then preparing lunch and yes. dinner that's not a monotone it's also yes. another way of expressing love and washing dirty dishes can be a very enjoyable experience a absolutely mm. i have read that the world's richest man bill gates i read an interview which his wife melinda gave in, to the press recently mm -hmm. It was published in Time magazine that Bill Gates at times wa washes dishes. Mm. I mean, he can hire the best servant in the whole world exactly uh, to wash those dishes, or he can buy the most sophisticated dishwasher in the world. He's got the money, mm. but sometimes to show his family that right. you know he's there for them and he yes. loves them right. and he loves to hang around them. I, I'm not sure if he's a believer. Uh, maybe he's not, but he he knows what it takes to run a family, mm. make a family life a joy, chorus, and not a mm. chore. And lack of communication in family. families has mm -hmm. become a big problem nowadays in the olden days it was only books and maybe television but today a person has to compete with laptops and desktops and iphones and tablets and what not so it's all the time facebook and twitter and all these kind of things how can we improve the communication between the family members yes uh, i heard about a son uh, Uh, who said uh, he asked his dad uh, for the iPad and the iPhone, and the dad said, "I paid." <laughs> <laughs> It's there. Our <laughs> house is is full of gadgets. It happens in my wife, and my wife is in the second floor. Sometimes send her a WhatsApp message from the ground floor. Hey, why didn't you come down? Why didn't you come down? And it happens. Now we can't run away from technology. Mm -hmm. The technology is there. But at the same time, we should ask ourselves some basic questions. Mm. Okay, the husband who is working from the laptop mm. must ask himself this question: Will there be times when I will close my laptop mm. and get on my lap, my wife, and talk to her? <laughs> She can be your yeah, laptop. That's wife. right. The man should ask himself the question: Will I not get off Twitter for some time and listen to my baby's tweets? You mm. know, instead of being on Facebook all the time. Now, why don't we look at our face mm. live in the family? Our, in the family, look at each other's eyes and talk and communicate. Mm. I also read a statement by one of the Google vice presidents, mm. uh, which was reported in the media. Her name was uh, Sukhinder Singh Cassidy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about four or five years back. She mm. said this in India Today conclave. Mm. You know, she said we must choose not to look at our email, mm. and now choose not to look at our the inbox messages that we get over email. Mm. Close our laptop and take our family for a holiday. Yes, because if we don't do that, it's coming to us all the time. Mm. Who said that? A woman who works in the corporate world said that. Mm. And what she recommends is in line with the Holy Word of God, the right. Bible. Mm. So the Bible talks about being balanced. Mm. Uh, I believe. Mm. You know, there were times when uh, Jesus just ate and drank. With his disciples, and uh, there are times when he advised compulsory rest for the disciples. Yes, and there are times when they worked hard. Mm. So we must learn to balance. We must learn to draw the line between hard work mm. and having a good laugh with yes. our family. Because at the end of the day, you might work very, very hard and earn a lot of money, but if you have not balanced your family mm. with work. You may not have the family with you to enjoy what you have worked hard yes, to earn. Exactly, and that is a bigger disaster. That's right. a very big disaster. Hmm. And when you die, you are not going to take all this with you, but you want to have that relationship intact. When you die, when you are on your deathbed, you want your family around you. Yes, that is a sad story of many young people, especially in the corporate world. They want to climb the ladder high up, and when hmm. they have climbed it, 
they have nobody with them, yes. including their family. Mm. So we don't want that disaster to happen to us. Yes. It can happen to any one of us, right. even as a preacher in the ministry. Mm. Now I can get so busy with my preaching and um, ministry, mm. then my, my family is not with me. Yes. It is a big disaster. Mm. So I need to balance. I need mm. to consciously take time mm. for family, yes. take time for to be with them, mm. to be available to them to have unhurried conversations mm, with them mm. so that this disaster is averted. Mm. Today the catch word is connectivity yes. and all the people want to be available to all their friends all the time yes. and they are not available to the family at all. Yes. I sometimes purposely mm -hmm. leave my cell phone behind when I go out yes. especially if I go to church I never take my cell phone yes. because I feel if anybody wants to contact me their missed call is there recorded yes. I can always call them okay. back or they can call back another time and I tell people a few years ago there were no cell phones how did we go out mm -hmm. it's okay it's mm -hmm. not uh, the, the worst thing in the world that people can't reach you yes so <laughs> absolutely so I just leave it behind on purpose quite often I think our younger generation should learn from wonderful habits like that because uh, that is where many complications in marriage begins in mm -hmm. fact I've read about a union ministers marriage almost collapsed because of a similar issue mm. because he probably did not know to stop yes. it when it comes to mm. communication online yes so it can be that serious mm. so that is the reason why we must learn to switch off mm. so even if you're using say an app like popular mm. app like whatsapp mm. yes there are ways in which you can uh, set the app so that Mm -hmm. You will only get to read the message when you go looking for it. Exactly. And it doesn't have to do ting ting every yeah. time somebody messages you. Exactly. So you must be the master of your gadget. Mm. Your gadget should not be your master. Yes. So we have only one master and that mm. is the Lord Jesus. Yes. But unfortunately our young generation mm. and our young couples have you know their uh, smartphone as their master mm. or their laptop as their master mm. or the social media as their master yes. so this should change and we all should repent and mm. I say this with all seriousness and mm. with a heart of pain we mm. all should repent mm. from our addiction to gadgets yes. and surrender our lives to Jesus who mm. shed his blood for us on the cross yes. and ask him to forgive us of our sin of gadget addiction mm. and Jesus will forgive us and give yes. us the grace to, right. to overcome that and the end result is not only we have made peace with God mm. we have made peace with our families mm. now coming back to the family what do you think about the responsibilities at home is it always the mother's duty or the wife's duty to take care of the house or is it the husband and wife who have to do it or is it the husband and wife and children and everybody who has to do it I think uh, the family is a team and the team has to learn to work together. Mm. So That's a beautiful word, the team. Yes, in, uh, when my son was growing up, if I see that uh, he has dirtied a place, uh, I, if I was nearby, I would go ahead and clean that place first mm. instead of waiting for my wife to do it. Mm. There are times when, when my wife was unwell and uh, if I was up, and you know, I would take time to do the dishes. Mm. The least I can do as a man if I got up first out of bed is to, to boil the milk. And you make know, the coffee, wet coffee. And make the coffee, yes. Why not? And uh, if I am strong in certain subjects uh, like maths or physics or chemistry, mm. having come from an engineering background, mm. if my son is weak in that, you know, that gives us an opportunity mm. for father to bond with the son. Yes. Uh, when the father teaches the son. Mm. The son. Mm. It's not just the woman's role to teach the kids mm. and to cook. look after the house look after the yes. house absolutely not mm. so we need to learn the skills which the partner is very strong mm. in and uh, because that's going to be always helpful then you will become more independent as well correct it helps us during the time of a, a crisis or yes. a, a time when we have to be alone mm. uh, that, and that it really releases helps us. the other person to do other things for example mm -hmm. I travel a lot sometimes yes. um, for uh, teaching or training sometimes we visit the children or help them out um, yes. when they need and uh, my husband knows to make his own coffee or tea make his own breakfast and he's so independent that he can manage without me and uh, so we both can manage without the other person so I think that way it helps as well when you share the responsibilities at home right absolutely I agree with you the portrait of an ideal godly family should be full of joy and peace and 
harmony, right? Yes. Now, how can we create these uh, joyful moments and have fun times together? Could you give our viewers some tips? Having fun times in the family can be as simple as sharing with your family a joke that you received via SMS or yes. WhatsApp or... And not know, be very serious all the time. Serious. You can share. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, instead of laughing about the joke yourself, you mm -hmm. can share that joke with your family yes. and, and laugh. Right. And the family pulls each other's legs, if I can mm. use that phrase, mm. in a very sporting way. Mm. Yeah, l l look at how mommy is, you know, all dressed up nicely. Mm. You know, she can give any actress a run for her money. Having that camaraderie, mm. that playfulness in the family is always good. And sometimes you can make a joke out of your own self instead mm. of making a joke of the other person, other person which can true. sometimes hurt the other mm. person. I sometimes do that. I, I talk about how I goofed up mm. and there's a big laughter. And mm. then we already talked about it in, in a, one of our earlier episodes to going for a drive with the family, mm. That's you know, true. to sit, uh, maybe drive along a highway. Just to have some coffee trees. somewhere. Mm. Okay. You can just uh, get off, have some coffee. Mm. Okay. Or if there are some trees around, mm. just uh, you know, take out your uh, bed sheet or mm. a mat and put it down. Sit there, sit there mm. pull out the guitar, mm. you know, have some music mm. and have some good dance, you know, uh, play badminton, mm. you know, or play cricket. You now, these are things that our mm. family needs to do. Sometimes our families are pretty one dimensional. They think the only way a family has fun is to watch a movie. Mm. I feel that's just that's one, true. That's just, just, just one way. Mm. And there are some families which they just only do that. Mm. But there are other things you can do. Like, for example, you can have a Bible fun quiz. Mm. Uh, you can go online. There are so many quizzes out there mm. uh, uh, in the internet. Mm. Or you can create your own quiz mm. and you can have quiz between uh, daddies always go with the daughters daddy and daughter versus mommy and son you know, have a quiz and then <laughs> oh, girls the versus boys girls versus boys and you know treat the winner with a good gift yes we have to just look for fresh ways to have fun as a family mm -hmm. brother duke you have a big ministry and traveling all the time you have so many responsibilities and you're heading a family so how do you cope with all these different responsibilities. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, the example of Moses stands in front of me. We read a story about one time after he got married, he came to Israel, leaving his family behind. And he got so engrossed with the ministry, he forgot that his wife was there waiting for him. And it took his father-in-law to bring his wife to him. Yes. And his father-in-law gave him a suggestion of having more leaders to help right. him in the work of yes. leadership, which he took very seriously. One way I go about doing my ministry is to delegate my work much like what Moses did. So I have volunteers to mm. upload YouTube videos for me. Yes. I have volunteers to upload audio messages for me. Mm. I have even volunteers to send Facebook invites for some of the events, Bible studies that we have for working professionals mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. Okay. So I give them my the details and the password. Sometimes they get into my account and mm. they invite the people. I don't do uh, all the work. I right. think when a leader, mm. uh, irrespective of what field he's a leader in, maybe ministry or in the corporate world, mm. if you learns to delegate work, yes. you know, then that work that he so gains, mm. he can give it to the family. So that's a basic tip, but I'm sure there are many other ways to actually find time for the family. Mm. Where there's a will, there is a way. Yes. Thank you, Brother Duke, for being so open-hearted in sharing your life and your ministry and your family with us. Thank you so much and may God bless your family. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow! An ideal godly family is full of fun and joy. The Bible has painted the ideal picture of the family which goes beyond the outward appearance. It reflects God's relationship with us. I think every one of us should strive for this. Don't you think so? Write to us about your struggles at writetoprobe at gmail.com. Next week, I'll be back with another important episode. Till then, God be with you. In India, when one gets married, we marry a whole family relating to your in-laws. Jesus said before you build a building, count the cost. Is it possible for a young couple to sort of draw a boundary line? If it's a minor issue, it is even okay to allow the couple to make a couple of mistakes. Parents can grow old, but they should never grow cold. We should learn when to speak up 
and when to hold our tongue.